right, this is our first video using the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. So prior to this video, you should have gone through um, the theory with Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, which is basically we're finding the total, the accumulated area under the curve. And basically, we use Riemann sums to get to Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. And then I'll show you in this video how the two are related and how the answers that we got in earlier videos uh, relate to the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. So with the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, there are basically just a couple of steps. The very first thing that you do is if I give you the rate, which I've given you here, f prime of x is a rate, it's a derivative, you know that you want to, first of all, find the antiderivative different than Riemann sums. Riemann sums uses the function as it stands. Fundamental theorem of calculus says anti-differentiate the rate that you're given. So the first thing that you would do is anti-differentiate, but now we've got these boundaries. So what I'm hoping is that if you in fact read through some of the um, notes that I've given you in Blackboard, you would understand that there is a way to set this up. So let me show you, and then we can go from there with what we're looking at. So what I've done on the left is in the blue here, you can see that I have set up a definite integral. Definite meaning I know exactly where I'm going to work with values. I'm going to go from x is equal to 4 to x is equal to 6. It's customary to put the lower limit on the bottom and the upper limit on the top. My integral, 12.3 e to the 2x minus 5 dx. In this next line, all I've done is separate for you. I know that some of you have struggled when you um, need to use u substitution in one part but not the other. So I've just separated it so that you can look at it that way. This piece of our integral uses a, a simple u substitution, but it uses it nonetheless. So what I end up with is 12.3 times 1 half e to the 2x minus 5x. I put a bracket at the end of that, and I go from 4 to 6. What I want you to be thinking about here is why doesn't it matter if I use plus c at the end? Well, in these, the plus c, because it is a constant, would just subtract out. Because what we're doing is we're going to find the value of our antiderivative at 4, and we're going to find the value of our antiderivative at 6. We subtract those two values to get the value, um, which is called the fundamental theorem of calculus value. So let's look at what that looks like now in Excel. I teach you something very simple called the five cell method. If you count, I have one, two, three, four, five cells. Yours do not have to be set up exactly like mine. This was just a simple way um, to be able to demonstrate it to you. This is my upper limit. This is my lower limit. This is the antiderivative that I calculated on my paper, right, there's my antiderivative, and the cell that it's referencing is my upper limit cell. I hit enter, and then I'm going to double click that value down. You can see that here I have again my antiderivative with the um, accessing my lower limit. This last cell is simply the calculation for the difference between my upper limit value and my lower limit value. And folks, the fundamental theorem of calculus using your five cell method is truly that simple. Let's go on to the next one. In the next one, we have the national health expenditures in trillions of dollars per year are projected to grow at a rate of r prime of t, where t is the number of years since 2000 and we've got this domain. So we're going from 2,000 to 13 years out, basically. So in part A, it says, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, find the area under the curve from 2006 to 2011. 
let's think about what those limits would be, our upper limit and our lower limit. If we're going from 2002 and we're going to start at 2006, that must mean our lower limit is 4. And then our upper limit would be 9. So let's move things out of the way and calculate what we have here. All right, so in the left, in this blue again, you can see that basically I've taken and this is my rate that I'm going to anti-differentiate, my lower limit of 4, my upper limit of 9, and I go and I do the same thing that I did in the previous. I'm going to anti-differentiate, put my bracket 4 to 9. So this is what you would do on your paper. Then you come to Excel, and here you can see there's my upper limit of 9, my lower limit of 4, here's my antiderivative, double click your antiderivative down, and then over here, subtract. Using the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area under the curve is the way that you want to do it. You will never use Riemann sums unless I ask you specifically to use Riemann sums. I want to go back quickly to the two problems that we used Riemann sums to calculate area. This is the first one where we were talking about um, the average credit card debt. So that was our problem. We ended up with 2538 approximately using Riemann sums. But if you remember in the video, I said once you learn fundamental theorem of calculus, you'll be able to do this a lot easier. So I want you to think about what this is. That's our upper limit, that B value. There's our A value. This, however, is no longer D prime of T, right? This is our antiderivative now because fundamental theorem of calculus would use the antiderivative. Well, when we go through and make our calculations and we subtract, wow, 2542, that's our exact value, 2538 was our approximate. Let's look at the other one now, too, and see the same thing. So when we used, this was um, the second problem that we went through here, where we were calculating the area under the curve where I gave you the rate of population growth. And um, our A value, and I set this up a little bit differently just to show you it doesn't really make any difference, but our lower limit was 4, our upper limit was 8. So our A was 4, our B was 8. Now I'm anti-differentiating this function, that's our derivative, or the rate of growth. Now I anti-differentiate, I get that, plug that in, double click it down. Again, here I'm subtracting, but make sure that you're going to subtract in the correct order or you're going to get a negative and it's going to throw you off. But here I've got the upper limit minus the lower limit. And again, look how incredibly close those two values are. Hope that you understand the relationship between Riemann sums and fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, there's a lot of these that you can practice in your lab manual. Good luck.